Okay, so here we go. We uh, have just determined the coordinates of our standard angles in the uh, quadrant one of the unit circle by using special right triangles, these coordinates right here. We use special right triangles, 30, 60, 90 triangles, and 45, 45, 90 triangles to determine the coordinates of each one of those points. Now what we need to do is determine the coordinates of the points in the other quadrants. Let's start with these four compass directions first because they're the easiest. We've already done this one at zero and uh, the coordinate at pi over two. What about the coordinate at pi? Well we said that the unit circle has a radius of one so if I'm starting at the origin which is right here smack in the center I'm going negative one zero aren't I? So the coordinate of this point is negative one zero. That's that point right there. Okay, and I hope you can see that when we're looking at this point way down here at three pi over two, that has to be zero negative one. Those are pretty straightforward. Okay, now what I want you to do is look at the symmetry of this circle. If there's a 30 degree angle here, there's also a 30 degree angle here, isn't there? So the triangle that I drew here to get the coordinates radical 3 over 2, 1 half is the exact same triangle as this one. Right? So I hope that you can see then that these two points are going to have the same coordinates. The only difference is that my x value for this point is going to be negative. My y value will still be positive, but my x will be negative. So let's go ahead and write that in. So my x is negative. So I've got negative radical 3 over 2, 1 half. And I can do the same thing for everything in quadrant 2. Remember that in quadrant 1, x is positive, y is positive. In quadrant 2, x is negative and y is positive. So I can continue with the same coordinates except all of my x values will be negative. Right? This particular point here, this coordinate will correspond with that coordinate. Same position in the quadrant, just in the second quadrant rather than the first. Okay? And then our last coordinate here, this one is going to be mirroring that one. So they will have the same coordinates except the x value will be negative. Negative one half radical three over two. In quadrant three, what do we have? we have negative x's and negative y's. So again, I'm going to do my th same symmetry. I'll actually use the same colors so you can see what we're doing. Okay, my red coordinate corresponds to my pi over 6 coordinate here, but they're both going to be negative. So this is negative radical 3 over 2, negative 1 half. This would be negative radical 2 over 2, negative radical 2 over 2, because both x's and y's are negative in the third quadrant. And this one will be negative 1 half, negative radical 3 over 2. Okay? And then finally in our fourth quadrant, quadrant 4, again let me mark these. There's my 30 degree analog there, my 45 degree version, and my 60 degree version. That's working in the negative direction here, counterclockwise. Okay, in quadrant 4, x is positive, y is negative. So this point here which is in the same position, relatively speaking, as this one is in this quadrant, is going to be the same positive radical 3 over 2, but a negative 
1 half. So radical 3 over 2, negative 1 half. This will be radical 2 over 2, negative radical 2 over 2, and 1 half negative radical 3 over 2. So you should be able to see, I hope, that all we really need to know are these first quadrant coordinates. Because once we have those, then the others mirror image them in the other quadrants. The ones in quadrant 2 mirror image along the y-axis here. And the other ones that are in quadrants 3 and 4 are symmetrical about the x-axis. Okay? And then all you have to remember is, from your basic Algebra 1 skills, when we put points in each quadrant, what's going to be true about the signs of x and y? Again, quadrant 1, we have a positive x and a positive y. In quadrant 2, we have a negative x and a positive y. In quadrant 3, we have negative x and negative y. And in quadrant 4, only the y is negative. Once you have that, you should be able to fill in all of the rest of the standard coordinates on the unit circle for all, for all 16 standard angles here, and there are 16 altogether. Actually, 17 if you count 0 and 2 pi as separate angles, even though they are one and the same. Okay? So that gives us all the standard coordinates on the unit circle. But what we need to talk about now is, what does that have to do with trig? But I'll leave you in suspense for the next video. Thanks.